So I'm changed from the black fabric, I mean the black thread, to a lighter thread. And when I put it against the fabric, you can hardly see um, the thread. See how that kind of blends in? But when we sew the face now, before I'm going to pin this so this doesn't come loose. I have a pin cushion full of pins, but I keep using the wrong one. One that's a little. Some fabric is harder than others. I also like to use or suggest that you use um, fabric that's 100% cotton, especially if you do, when you're doing the face. And there's a couple of reasons for that. So this kind of holds your fabric still. Um, when we go to paint or color the face, if you have a 100% cotton, it has a tendency to accept the colored pencils and the paint a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go back to the sewing machine. Um, and bring you over here. Oh, <laughs> let's try putting the thread on. Okay. When you change the top, you should also change the bottom or the bobbin thread. Hold on a second. Go in here. Turn this a little bit like this. Get this one out. Like I said, if you're using them, um, when you change your thread on the top, you should also change your thread on the bottom. I'm gonna start up a little bit higher. I didn't change my bobbin on this one, but it'll be okay. I'm not sure if you can see where I'm sewing here. I'm sewing right along the sides here, and we're going to sew all the way around and leave the top part open. I'm not sure if I'm spotlighted. Um, am I large on the screen for everyone? Whoops. Slow down as you go around the curb and just lift up your presser foot so you can do that. Some sewing machines have what they call um, a speed. And for some reason, maybe when I was starting it, this was already set all the way over to the fastest. But usually if, you, if you're a beginner, you want to keep your speed on slow. If you have used the sewing machine before, you can put it in the middle. Backstitch. Off 
to the top. Okay. The other thing that when I sew on the sewing machine, I have a sewing machine that allows you to put the position of the needle that when you stop sewing, that it stays down. And then this way, when you're ready, so that you don't lose your position where you're stitching. Let's go back to the table. And once again, when we cut out the face, actually I'm gonna leave the face on there for a few minutes. Because now what I would, the second piece, is anybody at that position? Oh, we have to sew the nose too. Hold on a second. If you are at the position where you sewed your face. Okay, here's okay, here's the head. The head that has the picture on it, what we're going to do now is cut out the inside of the, the face. And when I say that, I'm gonna fold my fabric and my pattern in half and where the eye is, put a little snip, open it back up. Well, let's go uh, two snips and go to the edge of the eye. And, oops, let's go back this way. Um, go to the edge of the eye. Let's snip it here and snip it there so that you can get your scissors in there. And can you see where I'm so I'm gonna cut out the inside of the eye on that second picture. There's your second um, face. So you end up with a piece It kind of looks like that. And when it's on the fabric, it'll look like that. You can go back and trim it out closer to the drawn line. Now, I will not say that I am a face drawing artist. So using the same shape of the pattern, if you decide that you can draw a face that you like better, you are welcome to do that. Okay. Um, fold this one in half. Um, so when I look at this, I'm going to just slip that off. If I can get my scissors in there. And just go around the eye again. Um, you try and keep your eye about the same size as the one that's next to it. So if you fold it in half, you can kind of see where, the, where you've cut, I'm sorry, you can see where you've cut the eye out, the other eye out and kind of trace that. So you can get more of a symmetric or identical eye, which we're not quite all identical, but you'll get an idea. And snip those little pieces off. And you'll have something that looks like that. And when you get to the mouth, I would fold it in half again and just snip in the middle of the mouth. So that you can get your scissors in there. Whoops. And then cut along the outside of the lip. Has anybody gotten to the part where they're caught up with me?
Okay. And let's see how this is cut out. Okay, so we have the eyes and the mouth cut out. And we're kind of creating our own little stencil. Now, I just grabbed one of the pattern pieces, but this actually should be the piece of the pattern, the second face that you put on your freezer paper. Okay, so we have that. And we're also going to do the eyebrows. And that's a little thinner. Make a smaller snip with that. Okay. And put your scissors inside. Snip that off. Snip this off. And we won't snip on here. Extra piece out. Okay. So we're coming along. You see when we put it up against the fabric, it's coming out like a stencil. Let's put that over on the side. Now, because the eyebrow is very small, you don't have to worry about too much if you cut that line, but you try and go to the thickest part of the eyebrow so that you can snip it. You can get your scissors inside. I don't know if you can see that. If you have pointed scissors, Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. And then once you have sewn your head around your head, you will leave it on the, on the paper, but take this off, take the first one off that you use to sew with. Take your second freezer paper one, center it between your sewing lines and iron that down because when you finish ironing that down, you're gonna take your pencil, mechanical or otherwise, and you're just going to sew this down so it'll stay um, secure. And then you'll come down and just draw around the, where you've cut out for your mouth. around here with your pencil for your eyes. And your eyebrows. Now, if you don't have, in your kit, you also have got some coloring pencils. Or if you have coloring pencils, um, you can take, let's see if you can see that a little bit better. That's where I had the stencil and placed, had placed that on it and ironed it, marked it. And now you have the lines for your, the face, where your face is going to be. 
The part I haven't done so far at this point is my nose. I'm going to cut that out of the freezer paper. Just kind of drawing a circle around out of the piece of paper. So this nose looks kind of big for this face at the present time. Can you put that up there? Looks kind of big. But because of the seam allowance, when you turn it inside out, it will become smaller. So I'm going to cut this out. Fold this up. And I'm going to go around. I'm going to go straight up. Because when I drew that nose, it looked like it got a little crooked. So you iron this on your fabric. And you want to put that where it's on the slant. This is this fabric is going straight up and down this way, depending on what size fabric you have. It may be going this way, but either way, you want to put it on slant. So I'm going to iron that on. And when we sew this, um, you're going to slow sew this very slowly. And we'll have the two pieces together. Okay, I'm going to move this down some, and in fact, I'm going to put it over here. And I'm going to go iron this on the ironing board, and I'll be right back. If you're ever sewing more than one piece, one pattern piece together at one time on your fabric, you want to leave at least a, a half an inch between your fabric pieces. Because when I cut this out, I'm not sure if you can see this. All right. When I cut this piece out, I'm going to leave like a quarter inch over here. And when I cut this out, I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch around so you want to have enough space that you can um, be able to cut out your pattern pieces okay how are we doing so far we lost a couple of people i guess we're going to take a break i'm going to take a break while we're, i sew this and, and deborah if we can stop recording for a minute where is it? I see it. Nope, that's reaction. Pause the recording. That's what we're doing. Question. Can you hear me? Yeah, I have a question. <laughs> I'm trying to take the freezer paper off of my body and it's tearing up. How did you get yours off without tearing it up? Hold it up. You probably ironed it too long. <laughs> That's probably why. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, okay. And then also too. Oh, and you <laughs> sewed on it. That's the other part. Oh, we're supposed to sew around it. Yeah, you sew. Do you cut it out around the edges where it says the black line, where it says the sewing line? Let me just, let me just spotlight you for a second. Well, okay. I'm just tearing it off then. And then yep. I made a mistake and I cut too close to the edge right here. Okay, so what you can do is you can go back, take your piece of paper off, and then go back and sew that side, that seam, that side of the seam again, okay. so that you, okay. so you don't worry about it busting open. Okay. okay. Well, I definitely need to look at the video again. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I forget what you said to do. <laughs> so we don't sew on the freezer paper; we sew around it. Right, you sew around it. It's, it comes like a template. Okay. Right. Okay, I'm gonna take you a spotlight. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay.
You know, uh, Gwen, if how many stitches per inch did you use when you were sewing? Because that might be part of my problem too. I think the stitch. When I did the body, I had it on 0.20, or you can put it on 0.18. I have an older machine, so it measures like 10 and 12 inches per inch. Um, I would go with the 10. Okay. No, I'm I'm sorry. Go with 12 because it that means you're putting more stitches in. Right. If I actually put more with 12, yes. Right. Okay. So I would go to like the 12. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, as, at least when you do the, um, the head part, you want to go to the 12. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put that over there. So this is the body. Oh, didn't cut out the head yet. And I'm going to sew while you guys are catching up. If anybody else has any questions, I'm going to go and sew the nose on. But it wants to come up. I'm going to heat it up a little bit more. And don't forget, if you want to ask one a question, just unmute yourself. You can do that by either clicking on the unmute button or pressing your space bar while you're talking. Okay. I'm talking to you every day. All right. So, so before I start sewing that, I also have stuffing. And I'm not sure who I had this conversation with yesterday. But at this time of the year, they have um, a product from Polyfill, and there's a couple other brands that sell what we call stuffing. It comes, you know, people use it underneath their Christmas trees or in their holiday decorating. Um, the one that I, su I suggest, that I kind of like as my favorite, would be um, Snow, which they sell it. Michael's and Joanne's Christmas tree store and the reason being is in addition to being bouncy when you push it together it kind of holds together um, and when you're doing when you get to the point where you're doing sculptured faces you want it in some cases where it will stay compacted. So Quinn um, when you mention the name it didn't come through. Can you mention the name of the stuffing again? Oh, okay. okay. It'll be helpful to put it in the chat maybe as well. Yep, I'll do that too. Um, it's called Buffalo Snow and it is sold at Joanne's Fabrics, Michael's, there's the chat, um, to everyone. Oh, can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Only five people got through. That's very sad. Okay. Why is it not typing? Let's go back over here. Okay. Michael's, well, it's typing very slow. I'm not sure what stores you have around you. Um, Joanne's and Hobby Lobby and what else did I say? Some of the, but those are the two stores that are the most popular. Okay, put that in. Um, in your kit, 
We have gotten quite to that point, but we will be shortly. I have a stick. It's like a chopstick. And that's what we're going to use to stuff the doll and to stuff the head. We decide that you have, um, um, you want to do more dolls. You're going to probably want to do something like investing in, this is what they call a stuffing tool. Well, it's actually called a stuffing fork. And I've had this one for a while. But there is a doll supply company. It's called Doll Maker's Journey. Um, there's another one called Joggles. And they sell this stuffing fork. This one is done by... It says Stuffing Fork by Barbara Willis Designs. And I'll type that in also. And this makes it a little bit easier to stuff because it has, it's kind of like it has a long needle. And then on the end, it has a place where when you twist it, it sticks to the stuffing. And you have more control. See how I'm rolling it up? And then when you go to put it in the body, you can put it where you want. But we're not gonna do that just yet because we are at a point where I don't have it downstairs. But anyway, um, when you get to, oh, okay, let me finish on the about some tools. Of course, when you do, um, sewing. You're going to want paper scissors. You're going to want the sharp pointy scissors so that you can get into the tight corners when necessary. And another tool um, which you can buy in different places. This is called a hemostat. Doctors use this when they operate on us. Um, dentists uses it when they sew the stitches in your, when you've done so you can, but this can also be bought from um, Doll Maker's Journey. This particular one has like a rubber tip. Uh, you can find them in different sizes. I would get like the, this I think is considered the six inch um, hemostat. And we use this to also stuff your doll. And it grabs onto it. You can wrap it around. Let's say you were stuffing the nose or something, and you can put it in the places that it needs to go. Um, when what size was the uh, first tool you showed? What length? It, it doesn't have. It has two sizes. Um, okay. This what one. Is this, this is says regular size stuffing fork. Stuffing fork. <laughs> Sorry. And then they have another one that is, it's called the small stuffing fork. And it's a little bit thinner. It's not the same length, but th this bar here is thinner. So like, if you're going into smaller spaces and stuff like that. But one of, either one of them is, is fine. The regular size one is sturdy. It's, you know, sturdy. You don't have to worry about stuffing too hard. People have used things as um, the needle pliers that people use for jewelry making for to use as their hemostat, but you can use basic tools and today we're going to use the, um, the wooden stick or the chopstick and this one has like a point on one side and a blunt end on the other side. So when you go to put it in, you can start out with the pointy side and then you can push it to the back, turn it over and use the flat side to put your stuffing in. Which doesn't want to go right this moment. So I'm going to just take it and start it with my fingers. <laughs> just put it in like that. But before we, well, once you get it, your body so. We're gonna put like a little bit of stuffing in the bottom of the body. A little more than what I just put in. And then we're gonna put our stick in. 
that's in the body. Now, if you don't have a kit, the stick should be, it shouldn't have a point, it should be blunt on both ends. So the, the stick that I would use for here is not, I don't think it's in this kit, let's see. But I will bring one down. Um, and you put it in, It'll you, when you're measuring it, you measure so that it's about, you can come down a little bit further. And you want it so that it has a blunt end so it doesn't go through your fabric. But you're gonna put stuffing in first. And you want it to be long enough that it comes up to the top of the head. So this stick would be a little short. But so this one would end up probably about there. Right? This would need like another half an inch on it. And um and because we left a, an opening at the top, I'm going to put this, you would put it through the top and just slide it in. Or you would put it in through the side, whichever is easier for you to put your stick in. And then we would start stuffing. Um, I'm not sure how much time we have left. Let's see. About an hour. Okay. Uh, so, Glenn, one more question. Uh, how long is that dowel? Because I think in your instructions it says 14 inches. Is that because I have to pick up one? I, I don't have one. Okay, so we pick up one. The, the sticks that they sell, the dowels that they sell, come in a, um, like four foot long. You know, they're about this skinny, but they're four foot long. So um, you buy the whole thing and then you measure where depending on, you know, how you sewed your pattern so that you get the enough length and then just cut it. You can actually use um, a utility knife to cut it, a kitchen knife, um, wire cutters, or if you have one of those hacksaws, you can use that to cut the, the dowel down to the size. And... You think um, Home Depot or Lowe's is a good source for that? Yes. Okay. Um, and they also sell, oh, wait, they sell it at the dollar store. They sell oh. it at skewers at the dollar store. They may not be in the store around this time of the year, but they sell them in long package in the, in the dollar store. Okay. Um, but you can find them at Joann's, Michael's, um, hardware stores, Lowe's. Um, it's probably, and check your dollar store first to see whether or not they have it. Okay. It's called the skewer at the dollar store. I have seen them at the dollar store where they so I'll bring the package downstairs um, later. But they have they have a package of skewers that I think you get like ten or twelve of them in the package at the dollar store. If you buy from Home Depot, you can buy one and um, you know cut it down to the size that you need. Do okay. you recall what section in the dollar store? Because the one over by me, you need to know what you're doing. We go over with it. They sell the food utensils. Oh. Because if you like a skewer for barbecuing and um, doing marshmallows and stuff like that, I'm pretty sure it was in the kitchen, you know, kitchen. Okay. Um, that's kind that of area. Isn't that rather Because the one you have looks like it's a little more, um, you know, has a little more diameter to it. Yes, and you want to get one that's about a quarter inch around. Um, you can get one thicker than that if you, if, if you, about the size of a, not much more than the size of a pencil. Okay. okay. A little okay. thinner than the size of a pencil, that, that'll give you an idea. And if it's as wide as a pencil, that's fine too. Okay. It's mean when you go to cut, you just have to saw a little bit more. Okay, thank you. Um, what other tool am I thinking about? Those are the main tools that, you know, once you start liking doing doll making that you might want to invest in so that um, it'll make life a little bit easier as far as um, stuffing things and doing stuff that you have to do. Some people use pliers and screwdrivers to do, to stuff with, but, um, 
So I'm going to back in to sew this nose now. And when I sew the nose, I'm going to bring my stitch even smaller than um, the 10, or the, I mean, should, I should say the 12 on your machine. Okay. Um, and I'm going to start off, okay, when I start to sew, instead of trying to sew, where is it? right on the part i'm going to start up here with this space and then come down and sew around take my time when you get to these curves you definitely want to slow down and take your time um, and that's going to be sewn on the double wants to move around. Okay. I have mine on point one six. Get some nose. Lift up your press the foot. Get to the curve of the nose and lift up your press the foot. Turn your fabric as you're sewing, and I'm kind of doing almost like one stitch at a time. Lift up, turn it some more. And lift it up, turn it some more. When you get to the tip of the nose, I'm going to sew that around. I hope we start recording again, I'm sorry. All right, um, you get to the tip of the nose. I go even slower, lift it up, turn it around. The outside curve. Um, my freezer paper got cold, so it kind of wants to lift up, but that's okay. We have someone else trying to sign in. And we need that curve. And when you're trying to turn your fabric, you want to turn your fabric as opposed to trying to turn your sewing machine because the sewing machine only goes straight. Okay. Okay, it fell off. <laughs> Actually, you seem to have left. Let's see. Cut, it off. Cut the extra strings off. Oh, that's good. All right, so now I'm about to cut out the head. Put this back over here for a second because this is not a freezer paper one, but. And, that in. and the reason why I'm doing putting that back on there so that when I go to cut the sides, I can see the seams a little bit better. As I get older, it becomes a little bit harder to see thread that's close to um, the color of the fabric. And you want to leave yourself some space about a quarter of an inch especially around the curves so that you can be able to clip it and as i said this is not going to be sewed across the top with the sewing machine it will be something to come back to 
after we colored in the face. And we have a choice. Um, I've already marked this. Use the stencil to mark up the eyes and the face. So the next thing we need is our color pencils. We feel that everybody's up to that stage, that they have their head cut and they have their stencil cut out. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to use my package to reopen. I'll be right back. <laughs> Those who are um, who do other arts and stuff like that may have um, okay this, this seal. This is from one of the kits. You need your color pencils. Um, I actually didn't bring those downstairs. I like using um, Prisma pencils, the Prince of Prisma color pencils, and uh, the DeWitt ink tints. Um, excuse me, um, doing the, when I do the um, coloring of the face. <coughs> but just a regular color pencil will work. Um, in this set, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to look for some brown. This particular set of pencils is actually a watercolor pencil. Um, you can use the watercolor or you can use um, the acrylic pencils. Let's see. When I learned this technique um, recently, I actually used, um, I put the stencil back on the face where it was, and I take a brown pencil and just kind of go around where the eyes are, the outside of it. This one. And mark that. The same thing with the eyebrows. Take your pencil. Actually, if you're using watercolor pencils, you might want to have a little bit of water nearby so that you can kind of get like a sharp point, a sharp edge on your don't always. And if you're with your, the, the pencil, I would take this. It won't quite line up here, so I'm going to just go in where I have my pencil mark and go in with the brown first. Actually, I'm not sure if this is brown. This says it's purple. Okay. And I found that same set of pencils. Ross for a dollar ninety-nine. Okay. We don't have Ross up here. Oh um, in this area, but um that's that's about right. Um I'm doing the eyebrows here. I like to go on the instructions, you'll see that I say try and go straight up and down with your eyebrows when you're coloring in. I was trying to do the outline, but it didn't want to work so well. Let's see if we can do something. Voila. 
I just learned something else. The eraser will take off the color of your pencil um, if you if you allowed it to go outside the lines a little bit. Okay. This has got enough of sales going on. So I take the brown, and this color is considered burnt umbra in this case, in this pack. What's this one called? And this one's burning in. That's the close suggestion to what we have on this particular pack. Oh. We would go around the sides, the outlines of where you are, and just kind of outline that. Now, this also has. Put a little bit of water on this paper towel. Bring that up down. If you're using the watercolor pencils like this particular one, um, and that'll. And once you go in on the outline, I don't know if you got. Can you see how the white is coming in? I colored in the whole white part. Some people do a little differently. You can dip in your watercolor pencils. Not with a whole lot of water because you don't want to get your face too wet. But when you color in the eyes this way, you also get an idea as to whether or not they're symmetric or kind of shaped the same way. And this one needs to have a little bit of um, adjustment. All right. So, well, that, because this is being done with a damp pencil, I'm going to let this drop and go down to mouth. So when I did the mouth, I kind of came off the sides a little bit, a little bit more with my my mechanical pencil. So I'm just going to erase that part and come back in. All those extra little lines before I put the water on it. Um, what happens when you're coloring? You get a lot of wind, and if you have, you should have some fabric left over, and you just take that and just kind of wipe it off so that you get rid of the fabric that's kind of lifting up. The other thing that you can do if you have some old t-shirts around or something like that, the soft t-shirt fabric is good for lifting up lint and stuff like that. So I'm going to take a color. This is a very colorful piece of fabric, but I've seen 